Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Boy, you can tell that we are heading into a long holiday weekend because the news is sparse. But where we start today is with a little bit of a follow-up to yesterday's discussion around the geopolitics of AI. Mustafa Suleiman is the former co-founder of Google's DeepMind and the new founder of Inflection, whose major product is, of course, Pi. Now, in addition to that, he is also promoting a new book that is coming out this month, and so has been all over the thought leader junket. He recently had a conversation with the Financial Times in which he effectively validated the U.S.'s strategy of using access to AI chips as a geopolitical tool. In this discussion, he suggested that we should expand that policy and try to leverage it to enforce a new set of AI standards. In a conversation with FT, he said, The U.S. should mandate that any consumer of NVIDIA chips signs up to at least the voluntary commitments, referring to the voluntary commitments that were won by the White House earlier this summer, and quote, More likely, more than that. That would be an incredibly practical choke point that would allow the U.S. to impose itself on all other actors in AI. Now, interestingly, it sounds like from this conversation that Suleiman isn't so much concerned about the extinction and existential risk questions as relates to other users of AI, but on problems that are here and now. He said too much of the conversation is fixated on superintelligence, which is a huge distraction. We should be focused on the practical near-term capabilities which are going to arise in the next 10 years, and which I believe are reasonably predictable. He argues that fundamentally this technology is different from previous technologies in the ways that it will participate in the economy and in society. Specifically, whereas other technologies are exclusively tools, AI agents will have a more direct role. In the future, he said, AI is going to be participating in the economy in a material way, unlike the way that Excel participates in the economy. It's going to be orchestrating actions using APIs. It's going to be booking and buying and planning and organizing. Now, when it comes to the critique of those voluntary standards, Suleiman argued that the critics were looking at it the wrong way. He said, Practically speaking, the odds of passing primary legislation through the U.S. political process are very low. It's not very often you get the seven leading players in a new generation of tech to sign up voluntarily to a set of commitments. Now, in addition to that type of voluntary commitment and using AI chips as a choke point to get other countries to sign on to those commitments, and of course needing new policy and regulation, Suleiman also said in this interview that there was the need for a new global institution that could bring transparency to AI models. Overall, he said, quote, inaction would be the worst of all possible worlds. Now, if you are like me and like interesting big picture power shift conversations, even if there is an air of just trying to promote the book, the fact that he is trying to promote this book leads to a lot of interesting discussions being prompted. For example, Suleiman also published in Time magazine an essay called How the AI Revolution Will Reshape the World. In it, he writes, AI is different from previous waves of technology because of how it unleashes new powers and transforms existing powers. While all waves of technology create altered power structures in their wake, none have seen the raw proliferation of power like the one on its way. Maybe we will read that on a future Long Reads episode. Another follow-up from the geopolitics story, Reuters reports that a number of companies are seeking approval for technology that can be used for image audio and video deepfakes. This is apparently different than the process by which LLMs got approved this week. And China so far has received 110 applications for approvals that relate to models that can be used to manipulate audio and visual data. Speaking of manipulating audio and visual data, one of the big concerns that people in the U.S. have is tampering with the 2024 presidential elections. Already, media are having to deal with the reality that AI now exists. Insider published a story this morning. A MAGA news network said its call with Trump was genuine after a report suggested it was an AI fake. Basically, this network, Real America's Voice, streamed an audio-only interview with Trump on Thursday, but because the audio was, quote, glitchy sounding with several breaks, a number claimed it was AI. One commentator wrote, doesn't sound like my president, that sounds nothing like Trump. He is slurring his words, cadence is wrong, diction is wrong, tone is wrong. Another wrote, his cadence is off, it sounds like AI. Now, what's weird about this to me is that representatives of the network have said it's real, but a representative for Trump himself declined to comment. Even if it does end up being real, it shows just how big of an issue this is going to be during this election cycle. Moving on to our next story, one of the big questions right now is rights around data usage. We've discussed a number of times over the last couple of weeks how media companies are responding to ChatGPT's new GPT bot and the ability to block it. And now apparently Facebook and Instagram have created a form that allows users to request to opt out of their data being used to train Meta's AI. Gizmodo writes... Meta introduced a new privacy setting Thursday that lets you ask pretty please for the company not to use your data to train its AI models. Buried in the nether regions of Facebook's privacy center, 
you'll find an entry called Generative AI Data Subject Rights. Here you'll find three options. You can tell Facebook you want to access, download, or correct any personal information, say you want to delete that personal information, or fill out a blank tech box if you, quote, have a different issue. Now, usually I would summarize this, but the Gizmodo author had a lot of fun with this piece, and you can tell. Continuing, quote, the form then asks you for your name, email address, and country of residence. You hit submit, the website tells you thank you for contacting Facebook. At this point, you'll probably want to do some occult ritual to ensure the data gods hear your plea. So there you have it. Good luck if you don't want Meta to use your data for AI training. Now, closing out this brief with a trip into the world of science fiction, Nature Yesterday published an article, AI predicts chemical smells from their structures. Neural networks can provide descriptions such as grassy for a wide variety of molecules, including some that don't exist in nature. Nature writes, To explore the association between a chemical structure and its odor, the research designed an AI that can assign one or more of 55 descriptive words, such as fishy or whiny, to an odorant. The team directed the AI to describe the aroma of, of roughly 5,000 odorants. The AI also analyzed each odorant's chemical structure to determine the relationship between structure and aroma. The system identified around 250 correlations between specific patterns in a chemical structure with a particular smell. The researchers combined these correlations into a principal odor map, POM, that the AI could consult when asked to predict a new molecule scent. Now, apparently then, to test against this, researchers also trained 15 volunteers to associate specific smells with the same set of descriptive words, those 55 that were used by the AI. After asking humans to describe odors and then asking the AI to predict odors based on chemical structure, the AI tended to guess very closely to the average response given by humans. In fact, it was generally closer than any individual's guess. Lastly, now that it's September, of course, we have to start thinking about holiday shopping. And if you are a gearhead, you will be interested to learn about Microsoft's new patent for a backpack that uses AI to superpower the wearer. ZDNet writes, Microsoft filed a patent for an AI backpack straight out of a sci-fi movie. Think Dora's backpack, but better. Now, basically, this backpack includes pressure sensors, a microphone, a camera, a GPS, a compass, a barometer, biometric sensors, a speaker, a display for visual outputs, processor, and more. The example they gave in the patent is a skier who asks the backpack a question about the slopes, which can then tell him which direction remains in bounds and which direction to go. And while this backpack will most certainly not be available anytime soon, Microsoft does have an event on September 21st in New York City, at which they promise to share a number of new AI innovations. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.